Hello guys, welcome back. Welcome to the fifth video in the 30 days of Databricks series. Let's recap what we did until now, right? On the first video, we learned what is Databricks. The second one, we know how to create the community edition and then walk you through the UI. The third video was about how to create the cluster. The fourth was about how to create the notebook. Right. If we have the notebook and if we don't have the data, then we cannot work into it. Right. So this video is about uploading data into Databricks. I am on the UI of Databricks, as you can see here. And if you go to this data tab, that's where we can upload the data. Let's click into the data tab. So here you can see that there is data and there is databases. So you need to create a cluster to assess tables. Right. For what is cluster? As I mentioned in my earlier video, if you go to the compute, then you can see the cluster. I have already started the cluster. So always remember before working in Databricks, if you want to do something, you need to start the cluster. It takes some time. So it's a good idea to start the cluster and then start navigating into the Databricks UI, right? Let's go to the data part. So as you can see here, now it says default because it went through that cluster. The cluster is activated, right, or started, and then we can see there is the default. But we don't have any tables here. How do we create the tables or how do we upload the data? If you go to this create table tab, let's click this. It will pop up this new UI. Let's just first go through the UI and I will show you how you can upload the data from your local computer. You don't even need to upload. You can connect it into S3. So data source, if you hover on top of this question mark, it says specify the data source you would like to read from. Most commonly, we see users uploading files into the Databricks. However, there are a number of pre-baked notebooks for you to be able to read from variety of data sources. I will explain this in this video, but let's just click what is this S3. So this S3 is AWS S3 bucket. There are two different ways how you can do this. One is create table with UI and the next one is create table in notebook. I'm not going to go through this now, but you get the idea that you can already read the data from S3 bucket into the community edition of Databricks, right? And there are other data sources. If you click this one, you see that there are many connectors. What is connectors? You can just go through this, right? But if you click on this drop down menu, you can see that there is Kinesis, Cassandra, Snowflake, JDBC, Kafka, Redis, Elastic Shorts, MongoDB, meaning that you can have different connectors and you can import the data into Databricks. But for this video, let's go through this upload file. What is this? DBFS target directory. What is DBFS? Next video will be about DBFS completely. So don't worry about this. This is just the Databricks file system. There is a file system in your local computer or anywhere and Databricks has its own file system. I will create the video after this about DBFS and there is the location here. File store tables and this is the optional. You can provide the name here or you can just leave it as it is. So it will create it for you. And it says here file uploaded to DVFS are accessible by everyone who has access to this org space. As I said you before also, if you create a org space and there is a cluster, right? If you upload something, whoever has access to this org space can view all the data. Let me drop file or upload. Let me just upload the file, right? I click here or click to browse. I will click this and movie statistics data set, right? I can just say open. As you can see here, when we click this, it is uploading here. Okay. Remove file. There are two options how you can do this. One is create table with UI and the next one is create table in notebook. I will show you quickly both of these. First, let's go with create table with UI. If I click this, it says here, okay, select a cluster to preview the table, right? I have already started the cluster. That's the reason I said you please start the cluster and start it before you start doing something, right? I can choose here 30 days of Databricks and I can say preview table. As you can see here, the table name is movie statistics dataset. Uh, create a 
database i haven't created but it is chosen by default the ones that is present here file type is csv and column delimiter i'm not providing here but let's see if it is able to configure it by itself or not and first row in each header in for schema multi-line so you need to provide this by looking at this preview table let's see what the preview table will be and then we'll just click this if needed as you can see here this is the data right there is string but if you see here there is underscore c0 what does this mean we have our header there but it is not recognized for that as you can see here it it find itself that the column delimiter is comma if you click this first row is header now you will see the change that's what i meant now you see that there is a header there so this is the movie title production date generates runtime minutes director name etc so you can create the table or create table in notebook that is the first thing that i mentioned you let's first create the table right if you create the table it is going to create the table for us and that will be inside this default database right that is how you can upload the data so as you can see here it says default dot movie statistics underscore data set underscore csv and this is the schema here and this is the sample data now our data is uploaded if you go to the data now here if you see under default it was empty before and now we have movie statistics csv that is one way of uploading the data what is the another way let's say that you want to upload the data and start working in notebook directly right let's go through that also you go to create table again we go here movie statistics open right it is going to be uploaded let's see and now instead as you can see here it automatically knows that there is already a table so it provided dash one over there it didn't overwrite but there is a new csv although the data is same right instead of create table with ui we are going to use create table in notebook let's click this what happens as you can see here it created our notebook for us right as you can see it says today's date this is why i am creating this video right so i can just say here some random example let's say first data upload right just sample name and the same thing is now how what i mentioned you before about creating the notebook right there is a python it automatically creates in the python so it's default language python so we don't need to provide percentage python here and there is connect in order to run this we need to attach the cluster as i mentioned you before go here and then choose the cluster now it is connected right and you can run the notebook now if you shift enter and now here it automatically provides all the different things this is how you can read things right so file location the file location is file store tables and the name of the csv file file type is csv csv options here it says first row is header is false because that is the default behavior right and as you can see here df it is using spark to read the data spark dot read dot format file type option there are many things we haven't dealt with what is spark or how to read data with spark but as you can see here it automatically provides the code for us you can just run shift enter and it will provide the data set for us it's it was in the csv but now it is in df so if you see here it is pi spark sql data frame and as we did in the previous section now there is no header name right there is but it is on the first row we don't want that to be in the first row for that you can just go here and you need to provide this to true meaning that the first row is the header shift enter again and now our data our column title right it is mentioned here and we have our data there are 4380 rows right and it took 1.86 seconds to run right that is how you can just create the data frame and it is using the display to show you the data frame 
there are many options why display because there are many ways how you can visualize the data also i will go through that later bit later but now we uploaded the data and we see with we created the table from the ui also and also we read the data directly from the notebook right and if you scroll down here it is saying here create a view or table it says temp table name it is providing the table name and as you can see here it is creating the table why it is doing this let's see this also now right if we run this it will create invalid view name movie statistics dash one dot csv okay we can just keep maybe let's say underscore csv and let's run this yeah, it is running now because there was no more in the name. It didn't allow us to create. Our temporary table name is this. As I said you before also, if you remember, in notebooks, we can view or we can run the SQL commands also in the Python notebook, right? We created our temporary table here, right? Here, create or replace temporary view. And now we can read that table because in SQL we did from the tables what we can do percentage SQL and select all from movie statistics data set I need to just provide this underscore CSP because that is what we provided here right you can just go here shift enter and it will provide us the data the same data that we get here first we read it via spark and now we converted that into table and then we read that with SQL, right? And here, there are many ways. Again, it says here permanent table now. What happens if we create the permanent table? Let me also give the same name here. I will show you this also. And we can write that in the parquet format, right? Here is the permanent table name, movie statistics data set CSV. I will just give it parquet name, right? CSV parquet just to say that it is created from the notebook right and then df what is df it is the spark data frame and we said write dot format we want to make the format parquet and save as table permanent table right when we create the view then if you go to the data tab we just have this movie statistics data set CSV, right? It is not saved here because view is when we want to work in the notebook itself. But if we want to save it, we need to make the permanent table, right? And if I run this now, it is creating a permanent table name. It will be movie statistics data set CSV parquet. Okay, there is CSV parquet, but don't go into the name here. So it says here the Spark job is completed. There are jobs right but what happens now if you go to the data as you can see here there is two tables now meaning that we permanently created the new table and this is in the csv format and this is in the parquet format right and now anyone who has access to this workspace can work on this table which we just created from here Okay, that's all for this video. Next video, I will explain you what is DBFS or how we can work with DBFS, Databricks file system. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.